Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you sent your Son. And, Lord, as we're entering into the season, the, the Advent season, the time where we look forward to celebrating the birth of your Son, our Savior. And, Lord, there's so much going on around us in our lives and so much happening in our, in our, at this moment. And sometimes, Lord, change seems to be taking place in every area of our lives, with our friends and our neighbors. Lord, as we step out into this future, Lord, as we face all the changes and challenges that are taking place all around us, I pray, God, that you continue to lead us, Lord, that you would lead me and to guide me and to help and to protect and to comfort and to support. Lord, say this with me, church, I cling, I cling. to you. You. For you are the rock you are the of rock. my salvation. salvation. You are my defense. You are my, defense. You are my defender. You are my I thank you, God, thank that you. as this world is in flux and change, you are not. You are the same. You remain steadfast. Lord, help us to be steadfast. Always abounding in your love. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen, 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 amen. Open your Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3. I hope to uh, share this brief message, this, this lesson, if you will, tonight, about what your past <coughs> proves, what the past proves to us. Um, you know, God's made a lot of promises, had not he? Okay, uh, I... I a couple of days ago, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, uh, you know, maybe I should just make a list of promises God made. And so I, I did a, I did a little search, and several sources say God made over seven thousand promises. Yeah. I don't know that I could give you a list of that. Watch this. How does God love me? Let me count the ways. Mm. Over seven thousand promises. I mean, think, think about this. He promised to strengthen you. He promised to give you rest. He promised to uh, to take care of your needs. He he promised to love you unconditionally. And some of you, you know, you might need to realize you're hard to love. But God says, I love you anyway. Uh, and then uh, uh, God says this. He says, I'll answer your prayers. He said, if, you know, call on me and I'll answer you. Amen. Uh, uh, he, he made a promise. He says uh, that everything can work out for your good. He promised to protect you. He promised to, he promises to free us from sin. All these, this, this, and this just is the beginning. It's just the beginning. He promises a future. Now I know we understand no one's been promised tomorrow, so we make the best of today. But we have hope for tomorrow. But where is your hope lie? Where, where, where is your hope lie? Does your hope lie in hanging on to your past? No. Does your hope lie in just absolutely being anchored and being shackled and held back by your past? Well, you know, this happened to me and that didn't. This, this went on in my life. You know, I just uh, here's the thing. Whether, whether you're, it was a hurtful comment maybe five minutes ago or maybe it was a bad choice you made five years ago or five decades ago, Events from your past can threaten to trap you. It can make you be shackled. It can, it can hold you down. It can make you feel the grief, the guilt, and the shame. But, and, but instead of by being haunted by the past, we can choose to view the past in a different light. Mm -hmm. I don't have time uh, if I could find it quick enough. Uh, there's, a, there's a group that I like to listen to when I'm working out called Skillet. Um, they're not just metal, but they've got, they've got some really good music. And there's one, one song that talks about his light. It says, your light terrifies the darkness. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The light of Christ terrifies the darkness. And of course, the lyrics is talking about the darkness that is deep within us, a darkness that tries to, to, 
to overwhelm us, the darkness that tries to keep us held in a place of darkness and, and depression and, and grief and guilt and shame. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. And let's look forward to expect the day of the Lord because he's made a promise. Jesus said, listen, I'm, I'm coming back. Did you know he said that? Yeah, he's he promised that he was coming back. He says, Beloved, I now write to you the second epistle, <laughs> if, uh, in, in both of which I stir you up in your pure minds by way of a reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded by water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Father, we just ask tonight, Lord, that you open up our minds and, Lord, give us understanding. We pray, God, for discernment. We pray for wisdom tonight. <laughs> that, God, that you would speak to us and remind us that you are the same and that you do make good on your word. You are a promise keeper. Thank you, God, for being the answer of our prayers as well as the one whom we pray to. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, so when we read this, you need to write, recognize something. How many of you know who wrote this letter? Mm -hmm. What's his name? Peter. I can't say what? Peter. Peter. Don't, don't, don't be timid. When you know something, say so. <laughs> Let the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. I got Peter. one. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. Say so. I got two. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Say so. I got three. Okay. Some of you need to be a little bit more confident that you're redeemed of the Lord saying so. Think of, no, say so, right? So, and, and why is it that we do this? Why is it that we're so timid when it comes to saying so? Saying what? I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I, I, Jesus, Jesus saved my soul. Jesus is coming back. Well, I've heard that my whole life, all, all since 1900 and whatever. Wait. He's still coming back. Whether it comes in my lifetime or not, it's none of my business. All I know is this, is during my lifetime, at any time in my lifetime, when it comes time for my lifetime to be ended, I need to hang on to his promise. Somebody say amen. amen. You see, when we read this, we, real, we realize that Peter, Peter was a bit of an impulsive kind of a guy. Uh, Peter was hot-headed. He, he was, uh, I mean, if you think about what, what happened, when, when they came to get Jesus, Peter's the one that took up the sword and whacked off the ear of that soldier. And what did Jesus say about that? If you live, if you live by the sword, you die by the same sword. Amen? And so, and Pete, wait, what else happened with Peter? Uh, I mean, we, we think about this, and we think about the past that Peter had. Remember who Peter was? I don't know him. Three times he denied his friend, his king. His Lord, his Savior. Three times he denied him. And he corrected him. Exactly. And, 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 and at the end of it all, when Jesus comes back, 
He says, go get the disciples and Peter also. Now, when we look at this, we see that he was impulsive. We know that he was hot-headed. We know that he would, you know, could fly off at any given moment. Some of us, we need to get a hold of that because maybe you might have a, a, a maybe not a, a Peter spirit, but a Peter uh, uh, attitude, okay? But he developed wisdom. Uh, he became, he, he, he um, had a spirit of humility and also compassion. One of the things that Peter had is this is what, what caused him to be so impetuous, I think, or impulsive, was the fact that he was sensitive to things. And he, was, uh, he wanted to see things done. He wanted to things, th see things happen. He showed us that God can use our weakness. As we read this, he says, hey, look, God can use our weakness and our experiences to do what? To help others. Can you imagine Peter coming to tell you his testimony? Now, just to be clear, we're not trying to glorify the fact that we had such a bad past. And some of us, that's what we try to do. We start telling them the story about our past, and we start telling them about what happened to us and what we did and how we were before Jesus. Before you know it, you're reliving your glory days, and you're glorifying and you're magnifying your past. When we're told that we should really get beyond that. But my point is, can you imagine what Peter would say? Well, let me tell you what. Let me, can you imagine? Peter would say, well, you know, they came to get, they came to get Jesus, and, you know, I cut off the soldier's ear, and, and Jesus scolded me for it. Yeah, we, we were sitting around, when we were sitting around, you know, breaking bread and sharing some, sharing some, some of the fruit of the vine, and <laughs> Jesus said I was going to deny him, and I did. I mean, can you imagine? But here's the thing. <coughs> well, when it came time, Jesus called me by my name. Did you know right now, did you know he knows your name? He knows your past. He knows your future. He's got a plan for your future. See, the past, when we look at the past, what we have to look at is this. And I listen, maybe you never had this happen to you. Maybe you've never even thought of it like this, but you had something really bad happen in your life. And if you ever said, okay, God, where were you? And you start interrogating, you start looking back, and you find out he was always there. Because mm -hmm. if he was there then, he's here today. See, the idea here is that we see that God says that the past is, is proof that God keeps his promises. The prophets of the Old Testament told about Jesus is coming. Jesus, pro Jesus was the promised Messiah. They predicted that he would be rejected. They predicted that he would die. And he, even though he was blameless, he was going to die. And even before Jesus' birth, they knew he would sacrifice his life for those who believed in him. And did you know that he gave his life even for many who didn't? So as a witness to Jesus' life, as his death, and his resurrection, here's Peter. Peter confirms these words that were spoken long ago. You may think you've gone through some bad times. You may be facing some bad times. But notice, God is near and present. Did he not say that? What Thomas, Jesus said this. God says this, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus is, is, is proof that God loved us so much that he was willing to send his only begotten son. Are you getting this? So the past reminds us of the work that God has done in our lives. I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. Oh, but I'm glad. So glad he did. Amen? When we reflect on who we were before God saved us, and when we begin to really think about who we, who we are now, Realizing that I'm not a finished product. Knowing who you, you, you gotta learn who you are and where you stand. And God's not finished. What happens when we start looking and say, hey, wait, it's a continual process, and God is not slack, neither is he slow. He's still working on us. He's he was working then, he's working now. And if there is a tomorrow, he'll be working then. Amen?
But when we start thinking like this, and we start thinking in this light, because his light terrifies your darkness. Oh, I know. We, some of us, we don't like the, the, the light to be shined because then we have to be corrected. And Peter didn't really care for it, really. I mean, it bothered him a bit, just a little bit. But it bothered him enough that he was reconciled to Christ in the end, called by name. My goodness. And if you think about all the things that happened in the it was, that all the things that Peter accomplished after getting through all the things that he'd done and all the, all the past failures and he looked at the future, it changes our perspective. We move from regret to joy. Anybody got a past? You say, boy, I'm sure glad today that I'm not there anymore. Amen? Because remembering God's faithfulness in the past, it reaffirms our faith in him today, and it assures us of his continued faithfulness in the future. Wait. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same. And when you come to know him, I really know him, and, and then you'll quit asking things about his character. And you'll quit asking, wait, no. He is the same. And I love that song. What he did for me, he'll do for you. Amen? There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open. Are you getting this? He'll welcome you. And it's not a secret, except for many of the redeemed don't say so so well. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, say so. so. So I want to have we're going to have we're going to talk about this here in just a bit. But you know what is one day? This is this is helping you, and if I, I I pray I pray fervently that you would learn to have a testimony to say so. What is one way that God used your past to teach you something? But also, how might God be using your present circumstances to teach you and to shape you into something not for right now, but for the future? How many, of you, how many of you know you have a past? Mm -hmm. How many of you expect that there's a future? Mm -hmm. And you have hope in that future. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. And Lord, tonight, Lord, we bring forth to you, Lord, many different thoughts and many different emotions. Uh, Lord, we have those that are in, in need of many things. Father, I pray uh, even sometimes, uh, uh, Lord, even tonight, I pray for myself. I pray, God, for others who, who have bodily suffering and bodily ailments. Lord, we, we pray for uh, Brother David who needs a liver. Uh, Lord, we, I pray for many Christians who need heart. And I don't mean just in the spiritual sense. But tonight, God, we pray, Father, for the healing virtue of your Son, the Spirit of God to actually begin to move. And we welcome that move. Lord, thank you for this gathering that we have, Lord. And Lord, thank you that tonight we have been allowed to set aside distractions so that we can listen and be touched by your truth. May we learn to grab a hold of this and, and cling to your truth. We understand, God, that you are a spirit. And the word tells us that you deal only in truth. Not in speculation, not in, not in wishful thinking, but, Lord, in the truth. And it's the truth that sets us free. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. And, Lord, I thank you so much for what you're about to do in our midst. We thank you for all this in the mighty name of Jesus. And, and the redeemed said, Amen. Amen.